parents and community members, thank you so much for coming to our iPad information night. I know there are a lot of questions, uh, there's a little bit of anxiety, and there's a lot of excitement, so I'm glad you're here. We're going to do our best to answer everybody's question. Just real quick, let me make a few introductions and then just a, a few um, kind of procedural things, and then we will get started with our presentation. Uh, first of all, my name is Aaron Henney. I'm the principal here at Woodway, and we have Mandy Bossick, our assistant principal. Um, we have some central office folks as well. We have Adam Fine. Uh, he is over technology. Dr. Kazanis in the back, George Kazanis, obviously, he's He's our uh, superintendent, and we're happy he's here. And we may have some other folks uh, that I may miss that I'm not seeing at the moment. Um, but uh, Susan, I'm so sorry. Susan Fletcher, right in front of me. Uh, she is also uh, with our technology department over instructional technology. So we have a lot of folks here that can hopefully answer all of your questions, um, and definitely at least give our best shot, because I know at Woodway we're really excited to have the iPads, but there are a lot of things that we don't have figured out until we get them into the hands of our kids, so we can't wait for that to happen. Uh, just real, real brief, the way the night's going to work, so we're going to uh, give everybody cards, uh, you know, as many as you'd like, and feel free to write down your questions, and then periodically throughout the presentation we'll take those cards up and then we will go through them, we'll categorize them, and, uh, and answer them right here in front of everybody towards the end of the session. I think that's the, probably the most respectful way um, to honor everybody's time. So we'll, we'll try to stick with that. Uh, so let's go ahead and go on. First of all, one-to-one -one parent meeting. Uh, it all goes back to our vision. And our vision here at Midway uh, really, should, really uh, for us to be in a partnership with, with you, our community, uh, we want to provide our kids with a safe, pleasant, attractive, and technology-advanced uh, environment. And so we really feel that the One to One Initiative is making great strides towards that vision. Also, our mission statement. And I'm going to read the whole thing to you. Uh, it's, it's short, don't worry. But our mission here at MISD is, is uh, that we want to be the district that's at the forefront of educating today's youth and tomorrow's leaders. And it's to maximize the individual potential within the learner-centered environment to pre prepare citizens who excel in a global society. And that part right there, uh, maximize, maximizing the individual potential within a learner-centered environment is key. Uh, I consider myself a teacher, even though I'm, I'm functioning in, in, in a different role right now, but at, at, at the heart of who I am, I'm a teacher, and I get into classrooms all the time. And I was telling one of, one of our parents just a little while ago, I'm so excited to have the opportunity to have this powerful machine in the hands of every single kid. Uh, the only thing that I, I wish could, could be a little different was I wish I could go back in time to when I was, you know, that fifth grade teacher in Houston, if my kids had an iPad, boy, I could have really enhanced their learning. But that's okay because our kids here at Midway are going are gonna to benefit, um, and, that's, and that's what's important. Um, so, so our goal in all of our campus improvement plans and also our district improvement plan, number one, is to meet the academic, social, spiritual, and physical needs of a diverse student population. And again, our iPads, everybody's hand is going to be able to help teachers meet those diverse needs. If I have these group of kids, I can put them on this particular app. These group of kids, I can bring them to me at my table face to face. I can put that student on a different app that needs a different need. There's going to be so many things that I can do to individualize the needs of the individuals in our class. And that's huge, and that's going to be, that's going to be a blessing. So the purpose is to provide, the purpose of the one-on-one -on -one initiative is to provide a truly participatory and authentic learning environment that heightens the student engagement, enhances academic growth, and intensifies the desire to learn. So, and I want to bring particular attention to this next part here, inspire students to create, innovate, communicate, collaborate, research, problem solve, and think critically. Last year, when we first started really getting into the iPad initiative, and again, I shared this with one of our parents, and I was, I was um, you know, part of me was a little skeptical, another part was really excited, 
but I wanted to go and see what, what, what's the big deal for myself. I mean, I know Ian's ISD was going to a one-to-one -one initiative. That's where Westlake High School is, and I know some folks out there, and they just brag and brag and brag about how wonderful it is, but I wanted to see it for myself. So obviously, uh, down the road at Spiegelville, we had it going on already, and I went and visited some of the classes, and I'll never forget, I saw a little girl, I believe it was a second grade class, and, and everybody is doing uh, an assignment on weather. And some kids have got the paper pencil and they're doing Venn diagrams, and some kids have iPads and they're doing different things. And this one little girl starts explaining her, it essentially looked like a, a newspaper, like a magazine, you know, like professionally done uh, weather comparison thing. And she starts explaining to me what she was doing. I was floored. And I asked her, I said, can you print that out? I mean, think about what I'm saying, you know. It, Spiegelville, one to one initiative, and I'm asking her to print it out. She said, well, I can email it to you. Well, sure, I give her my name, she pulls it up, boom, it's in my inbox, and then I'm showing it to our faculty later at our faculty meeting. And I was floored, and quite frankly, I was a little bit jealous, I must admit, and I kept thinking, oh, we gotta get those at Woodway. Um, and so, the purpose is, is clear, we're gonna be able to really be uh, on the cutting edge and doing some innovative things with our kids. So how will this affect learning? Well, there's been some research done, um, and those of you that know me, I tend to talk about research a lot, but uh, there was a study that this uh, Project Red group did, found certain things, um, not a quantitative study though, <laughs> uh, qualitative, um, but really they, they pulled together a lot of information and they found certain characteristics that is gonna help make a one-to-one -one initiative successful. And so we just wanted to highlight a few of those First of all, um, schools employing the one-to-one -one student ratio and key implementation factors outperform other schools. So there were there were plenty of districts out there that are getting to a one-to-five ratio, uh, but you know the, the studies are showing that to really make the difference, every kid needs to have have the iPad. And if you ask teachers, they're going to tell you the same thing. We have had. Over 30 iPads, just in different ways we've, we've managed to get a hold of some. And we have a pretty good group, but the teachers have to share. And so these iPads have been in the hands of kids for the last couple of years. I mean, where they're switching classes, one day they're in a kindergarten class, next week they're in a fourth grade class, constantly. You know, it, as a teacher, you're very limited when you're in that situation. And I will also add that we haven't had a single iPad break, even though we've had them for a couple of years and they're constantly moving, they're never in the, you know, in the storage. Um, so I think that's a success story. Also, you need to be able to differentiate the delivery, content, and the assignments. One of our goals is to not just replicate a, a pencil and paper activity and now just put it on an iPad screen. We really want to teach the kids to create. And that's going to be a challenge for us as teachers. It's going to be hard work, but we're committed to, to learning and acquiring those new skills. Increase engagement through choice. Again, we're going to have to decide who does the learning belong to. And really, ultimately, it needs to belong to those individual kids. And so offering those students more choice and helping them to choose those rigorous activities is going to really get us what we're wanting. Access to current information. And do you remember the old days going to the library and getting an outdated encyclopedia set? You know, that's not exactly current information. Those days are gone. And we're just moving ahead into the future. So uh, increase the search by examining and critiquing the information and media students see, hear, and read. Uh, you know, you, you've heard, well, it's on the internet, it must be true. We're going to teach our kids that, no, not necessarily. You know, there's got to be a lot of thinking involved. And again, it goes back to, to you know, who, who does the learning belong to? Well, it belongs to those doing the learning. So we need to teach our kids uh, to not be gullible learners, but to be critical thinkers. And finally, we need to allow for formal and informal learning. Anytime, anywhere, learning can be happening. It's not when the students are sitting with a book in front of them and I, the teacher, am directing them. Learning can be happening all the time, constantly, even when they're at home, when they're here. Of course, these students moving forward to when they have that device in their hand as high school students, they're going to be light years ahead of many other kids that don't have this opportunity. 
So now I'll turn it over to Susan, and we will be taking your questions a little later in the presentation. I'm a first grade teacher at Spiegelville Elementary. The one-to-one -one and iPad initiative has truly put the world in my students' hands. The children always have a collection of books in their hands. I put individual book apps and Houghton Mifflin Harcourt app on their iPads. They can read when they finish work early. Often we use one of these books for guided reading groups. I love the fact that they are already leveled for me. There are many math and reading apps to help the children master skills. During the first few weeks, we practice putting a few apps in folders. Now the children can do this independently. With the Puppet and Story Creator apps, my children use their creativity to apply and synthesize skills we are working on in language arts. They have been able to write many books. Scribble My Story is a wonderful app. After the children open up Scribble My Story, they can choose from these book templates right here, or they can create their own book from a blank book template. This is a book that one of my students made, and she stored it on her bookshelf. And she can go back after she taps it and edit it some more and work on it for several days. Or she can share it with someone via email. Or she can just simply read the story. By tapping to open it. I can fly! Guess what? I can fly! I just use my... And the program has a feature wheels. to read the story back to her. This is what I look like high in the air. There are many apps that we use for drawing. We have put them all inside a folder. We often use Dry Erase, Neon Pad, and Doodle Buddy to practice our skills. The app Screen Chomp, Edu Creations, and Show Me have a voice feature, so the children are able to record what they're doing at the time. They can send this again via email to me and show me the work that they did. There are a few examples of what my children did using Screen Chomp and Doodle Buddy. This way they can add the stickers that they really like and individualize their work. Again, that was just a really brief explanation of how this first grade teacher has used um, the one-to-one -one iPad with her students to write and they're writing and they're math where the kids are explaining what they are learning which is a great way to demonstrate uh, what the kids know. What I want to do right now is just kind of explain a few practicalities of who will be receiving the iPads and when it's going to happen. So first of all, who will be receiving the iPad? As you can see, um, K-1 students will be receiving an iPad 2. Uh, grades 2 through 12 will receive an iPad Air. And the pre-K classrooms, we're going to be placing a set of five iPads in each pre-K classroom. The teachers will use them as centers within the classroom. Um, if you happen to have a 7th through 12th grader, those students will be taking them home, grades 6 and below. They will remain at school. And what's nice about that is that every day the student will leave their iPad in their homework class and it will be charged overnight so there's you don't have to worry about that responsibility of getting the iPad back uh, to school and getting it charged. The teachers can be taking care of that as well. When is this going to happen? Uh, we started today at the high school and it was a very hectic day. It went great. We rolled out 
765 iPads to high school students today. We were very, very busy. And we will be back there again tomorrow and Wednesday to finish up. So it went well. And you'll notice the dates up on the screen. Um, Woodway is February 17th. I don't have them all memorized. And again, that's tentative. Assuming everything keeps going along the, uh, the way we anticipate that it will. That's the day that we will come in and we will go into your student's homeroom, classroom, and work with a, a class at a time, showing them how to, to uh, turn it on, how to do some basic things on the iPad, how to carry, carry it, you know, how to take care of it. So we do an orientation with our elementary students in their homeroom classroom. How, what does it take for your child to receive an iPad? Well, there, one of the things that needs to happen is you as a parent need to go to our M-Link website, and I'm going to talk about M-Link again in a few minutes, and there's a parent agreement, and you just simply fill out a few pieces of information and click Submit, and that's all you need to do as a parent to sign up your child to receive the iPad. Your student, on the day that they receive the iPad, there's a little agreement that they'll sign their name. We want the students to know that there's a responsibility that goes with this, just like a textbook or any other device or um, instructional uh, material that's given to them that they ought to care for it when, when they have it in their possession. So um, they will sign it and we'll make it official with them and then they will receive their iPad. I'm not really saying anything else. We've been talking about our high school students, but I'm not going to kind of cover that information. They do have to have their ideas and stuff in order to get there. So if you have any questions about your middle school or high school students, just kind of see me afterwards. And I think. Thanks, Susan. Um, I'm going to just speak briefly about some of the responsibilities, what we're trying to do to teach student responsibilities. And what, what parent responsibilities, district responsibilities. Again, if you have questions, we would ask that you write them down. We'll answer all the questions. We will be here until the last question is answered at the end. So if we don't answer your question during the Q&A session of the cards, please stay around until we've answered every possible question we have. We want to make sure that you have everything answered before you leave tonight. So under student responsibilities, I'm going to go pretty quick. And, I, and I'm... Like Susan said, we've been speaking in high school and middle school modes for a bunch of parent meetings, so I'm going to try to par it down for our, uh, elementary students. But the responsibilities we're going to, we're going to, from the instructional team, they're going to help the students to make sure the students know that they're how to be responsible with the device. Like Susan said, how to walk around the halls. And like Mr. Pinky said, they've already had a bunch of devices here. We've had no issues. I should also mention, at Spiegelville, we had one device that was broken, it was an accident, it was, it was covered by the district, it would have been covered by the district, so we don't anticipate any issues in the elementary at all. Elementary and intermediates, we feel pretty confident that the devices are going to be uh, well taken care of, and that since they're remaining in the classroom, they're going to be in the docks. Um, you know, it's just the, the horsing around and that kind of stuff that we're really wanting to, to make sure we don't have them yet. But, so, students need to make sure that they guard their information, so we'll we'll do that for you. Is is uh, from a district level by doing a lot of layers of filtering. We have a lot of layers in place. We'll address some of that in a little bit about how we filter, how we filter email, um, some of the things that we do differently around elementary students versus middle and high school students. Um, students should ask permission before recording, so that's one of the things we'll, we'll stress in the classroom. The teachers will stress that from an instructional perspective. I think it's important for parents to know, know that as well. Uh, parent responsibilities, you know, I, I think it's valid for all parents to talk to their children about them, you know, how to use the device uh, responsibly, um, you know, what kind of care it is to take place on this. And ma'am, you're taking pictures, we'll have the slides available if you want them, but you guys are welcome to keep any information you need, we're here to provide, okay? So we want to make sure that you don't leave here unprepared. Um, we want to make sure that you, you let your student know, if I'm in class, I'm in Mrs. Smith's class, and my iPad's not working, you know, raise your hand, let the teacher know so that we can get that repaired. We have our own in-staff repair department, 
Uh, we do most of our own Apple repairs ourselves. That's been a big question. And we'll get that repaired and back to the students so that they can do instruction just as soon as possible. Um, but we talked a little bit about the responsibility for replacement and repair costs, and that's in the parent agreement. We'll talk about that in the end link section. And then if a device is lost or stolen, um, they need to report that immediately here at the campus. I, we don't anticipate that happening at the elementary levels because really they're in small groups. They're staying with those kids. They stay in the classroom. And I'll tell you, at Spiegelville, the teachers have done an outstanding job of counting the devices at the end of each period and making sure we know where those devices are before they let children go. So we have not lost any device. Um, even in the iPads that we've had, Mr. Penny talked about, we have iPads all over the district from the intermediate levels down, we've had none stolen. Uh, we've had, we have approximately a thousand devices just required, just in carts and other various and sundry things, and we've had none. So it's been very positive. And then at the end of the semester, we want to return those back into stock so that we can deploy them next year for, for parents. But again, we don't anticipate any issues at the elementary levels. <coughs> District responsibilities, we are responsible for putting the apps on for the students. So the students will actually go to the app store to download applications. The teachers have a list of standard applications. Those are posted on the Inland website. We'll talk about that. If you have objections to a particular application, um, you can notify the instructional technology team. They'll take that and talk about it and discuss it with you as a parent as to, to why it does or doesn't have uh, instructional value. Um, the security profile will be installed, and we do that even at the elementary levels. We're using a, a product called AirWatch. You're welcome to write that down. That's our mobile device manager. Many districts are using mobile device management. And it allows us to track the device, but more importantly, it allows us to maintain a profile for that student so that we can make sure that it's filtered correctly. We can make sure that, you know, there are businesses around that have Wi-Fi outside of the school. So it's possible if a, if a kid is doing a report on something outside on science, they maybe might pick up Wi-Fi at another facility. Well, what we don't want to have happen is we don't want them being able to get to some unfiltered internet resources. And that's what this allows us to do. So no matter where that device is, so even if your child goes to the Bob Bullock Museum, it's still going to be filtered because it comes back in through the, the filtering system of the school district, okay? So it's very important that we're making sure that we're responsible for your little ones. Um, digital citizenship, so one of the things that we've talked about, Susan and her team have done a really good job and will continue that is, what does it mean to be a 21st century learner? What do we need to teach children responsibility about how they use this device? Is it okay to just record folks? No, you need to ask permission. We're going to have a protective case. It's a very good case, so that, that has prevented a lot of accidents. We've had potential accidents in the past. We don't anticipate any issues with this. And then one of the things that we've discussed is we're going to offer parent education courses. So it's not possible for you guys to know everything. It's not possible for us to know everything. We have to look for other folks to help us as well. But one of the things that we want to do is have elementary parent nights on things that you can do at home with just your child and yourself even online. So um, there's some resources on the link today. i have talked about layers, one of the things that we do. Um, that I recommend all parents do. If you've got internet at your house, you should use OpenDNS if you're not already using it. It's on the website. We actually have a link that tells you how to install it. Um, OpenDNS will prevent a lot of malware and a lot of bad stuff from happening at your home network. Highly recommend it if you're not using it. Um, it's, and it's nice because you get reports. It's free. You get reports and, and information about where your child has been going and what they've been doing on the internet. So, um, that's it for my part. If you D N S, I'll uh, I'll show you on the link, or we'll post that, or come see me after, and I'll help you. Thank you. No, it's it's a excellent. So Susan's gonna. If you want to hold up your card, if you have a question already, we'll take it up. If you if you don't, if you want to hold your questions. I know there's going to be a lot of questions about what, when, why, how. Um, again, we'll make sure we stay until every question's asked. So we're going to go through the questions. We'll start addressing the questions after Susan goes over in length a little bit, and then we'll stay until the last question is answered, okay?
uh, just show you briefly what resources are available on Hemlink. It is a website that we've created, and it's not just for the iPad. It's really about a reimagining learning. In fact, the byline of the Inlink website is where Midway connects to reimagine learning. And the link is mlink.midwayisd.org. And I'm just going to briefly go through a few of the features. What the, there are tabs across the top, and the first one is FAQ. So we're trying to put questions out there. As some of the parent meetings we had last week, we received some good questions that we had not thought about putting out there. So we're going to put those out there um, and answer those as well. We answered them in the meeting, but we're going to put them out there for everyone to see. And there, we've broken them down by just some general questions, like, you know, will my child need headphones? Um, you know, can they bring their own headphones? Those type of questions. What about the care of the device? And some of, them will, some of those questions will be related to secondary students who take them home but others are, are general for any student. Then there are questions related to um, iTunes account and security and setup. And security and setup is where, is, is that in the open DNS or is that in the, uh, is it somewhere else? Okay. And so those kind of questions that you'll see, you can just choose which topic and just click and look at the question and see the answer. Um, it is there. It is, I thought it was. And so it will take you to another website that explains um, yeah. open DNS. Another tab that we have is called Rollout. And under the Rollout, you can select your campus that your student attends and see the date and, of course, the date for the parent meeting and what's required. So if we were to change the date that we're going to roll the devices out to Woodway Elementary, we would post it on MLink. I mean, and I know your campus is going to keep you informed as well because you have great administration here and they're going to keep you informed. Also under uh, Inlink is a parent tab, and that's where the parent agreement is located. So you want to go to parent and choose parent agreement and fill out that information and submit it if you've not. We'll also tell you tonight we have five laptops at the back of the room so that if you have not and you want to do uh, sign up tonight, you are certainly welcome to use the technology right here tonight to sign up uh, and sign up parent agreement for your child. Under the student tab, you will see the student agreement. And so we will be going over a lot of those responsibilities in a elementary kid-friendly format for your child. You know, we certainly wouldn't read all that to your child, but we will condense it and make sure they understand what their responsibilities are. Also, for you as a parent, you might be interested under the student tab to look at the standard apps. Under the standard app, we've broken it down, and you'll see elementary is one. What apps are we initially going to be putting out on the iPad for the students? So if you're curious, you know, what kind of things are we talking about, go check that out. Go under student and go to standard apps and see what uh, apps will be initially placed on your child's iPad. There's also a one for staff, and then there's one called 21st Century Learning. And under this tab, we are placing art links to articles that are outside of Midway ISD. So what is happening in learning today in other places and how you know so you can kind of look and see what else is going on in the world besides at midway so that's what those posts are about under spotlight and this is one i'm really excited about this is where we spotlight what's going on here and so at midway so we spotlight our teachers and our students and you will already see there are things posted we've had you know uh, as we said ipad cards and some other uh, technology available to our students We've already been using that with our, our kiddos, and so we, we're spotlighting what our teachers and students are already doing. So what I want to do, um, real quick, right before we start answering questions, I want to show you one of those spotlight features. And let me just preface it by saying we took our youngest kids, which is a pre-K classroom, it's a, actually a bilingual classroom at Hewitt, and we took high school Spanish, so some of our oldest kids, and we connected them through video conferencing, and the Spanish students got to practice their Spanish and the pre-K students were able to practice their English and they were able to talk about different um, things to uh, connect outside of their classroom walls. And so this is just kind of a fun little video, it's very short, I just wanted to share it with you.
questions. And I'm going to start with this one real quick. This um, question is, I have a daughter in the special ed program currently at River Valley. Do the seven students in this class get iPads also? Yes. And if you have questions, if you know, if you have a special needs student, um, I'll we'll try to answer your questions as best we can. If it's something very specific to that classroom, we will, I will get that either to that principal or that teacher or Dr. Mishwak, the special ed uh, director. Um, she's not here tonight. So, are textbook textbooks going to be on the iPads? Um, right now, um, as you saw in the first grade video from Ms. Whitley, she put, one of the apps she put on there was um, from a textbook company. It's a supplemental resource, and she's using that within her classroom. As the uh, textbook publishers start moving forward, we anticipate that they will be digitizing their textbooks. Right now, they're, they're um, working to do that right now. Um, some of them are further ahead than others, but in the future, do I anticipate that they will be? I, I would anticipate that they would. Um, would, you, would you write that down? Okay, thank you. My child is carrying the iPad in a responsible manner. Another child bumps into my child who drops the iPad and who pays. Good question. Um, what will happen is when something, that type of situation occurs, uh, um, Ms. Lossick or Ms. Pena will get involved, you know, just kind of investigate what happened, you know, was it accidental on both sides, you know, was, uh, was the other child, you know, pushing on purpose, uh, was there some negligence on the other child, and they will make that a decision that's appropriate, you know, if there's something that's accidental that happens, as we mentioned, the one that happened at Spiegelville, um, your child will not, if your child is being responsible, your child is not going to be, you will not be responsible for uh, covering the cost, it will be determined on an individual basis and situation. Uh, can I change my students' Apple passwords so I can limit what apps they download? Well, in K6, they can't download any apps, and so that's, if you have an older student, um, come see us, we'll talk about the older students. How will apps be purchased? Um, they will be purchased by the, the school, again, within the district, so, it won't be through an iTunes gift card. That was a part of the question. Will social media apps such as Facebook be allowed? Facebook is currently blocked within the district. And Adam, I'm going to let him address some of the internet filtering in a minute so he can talk a bit more about how it's filtered. But Facebook is blocked. Uh, no fee for this year. Do you anticipate fees in the future? What we plan on doing is looking to see how this semester goes and how um, um, everything is taken care of, how our, our students are using it, and we will evaluate that when we get closer toward the end of the year. So I don't have an answer for you for that right now. Will students be getting personal email or other type of cyber account? In order to set up an iPad, you have to have an email account. That's not our requirement. That's a requirement from Apple. And so your child will have a Midway student email account that is filtered through our filtering system. Um, but yes, they will have one. And they've already, and, had, they've already had one. It's just that we didn't make it available. But we've had that because students still sign in in the computer labs even when they do And I will tell you, and this is a um, something that I've seen at Spiegelville that has been really exciting for the students and for the parents. A lot of times when you're, you're, the students would create a project to finish a project and they would be so excited about it that the teacher would say, you know what, you need to stop and email that to your mom and dad right now. And so the, they stop and they send it to the parents so the parent can see what's going on, what the child's been doing, and they're learning that day. So that's been a really uh, positive event for the students and teachers there. I will students have access to the, the device at all times. Um, no, that's going to be determined by the teacher. The teacher's in charge of the classroom, and we have developed a system with, as we go and we're carrying it through to the rest of the elementary schools. It's called Apple Up and Apple Down. And so the, the students know that when the teacher says, you know, Apple Up, and I don't have mine, but with that case on it, but the, when the Apple's showing, that means that we're not using it, and you place it on the desk with the Apple facing up. It, 
if the if the apple's up and it's you're not using it, if it's apple down, I'm not covered by an asset tag. Yeah. That's the then, apple logo. So then they know that they can use it. So we have a system where students know when it's appropriate to be used and when it's not. Another thing that um, elementary teachers will be doing is we, they, one of the things they can do is they can put up on one of their boards, when you finish your assignment, here are some apps that are appropriate for you to go do today for the next five minutes. If we've got five minutes until we transition from reading to math, then you can go do this for the next five minutes. What we have found is that the student engagement and students are learning even when they have five minutes left before they move on and transition to another subject. <coughs> what kind of instruction preparation have teachers had to equip them for this type of learning? Good question. Um, we have start, we started actually probably two or three years ago when iPads came out, but more um, specifically, last year the teachers were all given a device and we started working with them in professional development as soon as they started receiving the devices last year uh, through the summer before the um, before christmas we had some more professional development every teacher was required to attend and so we're working with them on what does it mean to have a one-to-one -one device uh, in your classroom and it will be ongoing we're not stopping just when the kids receive the device Will the device move up to the next grade with the child? We will collect the devices at the end of the year, and uh, the technology department will um, clean them up, you know, wipe them out, make sure everything is um, ready to go for the next year. So it, it won't necessarily be that same device that moves up. Uh, what percentage of time will students likely be using the devices? Again, that's going to depend upon the teacher. And it might be, you know, 10% starting out, it might end up being 40% one day, 30. It's going to depend on what's appropriate for the instruction and the learning. Okay. Oh, the same question. So. All right. Uh, several questions here I want to answer. What, was the, what were the test scores after a year at Spiegelville, up or down, or how much? Um, speak, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because our system is so, it's very complex. So there's, last year we were judged according to three indices. Indices, is that correct? Uh, Spiegelville met all three indices, as did Woodway. Uh, we're also compared to 40 schools across the state that are our comparative schools. In other words, these are schools that have similar demographic size, the state uh, kind of lists list them all. Woodway did very well. We were fourth on that list. We're planning on uh, reaching the top of that list this year. Spiegelville was number one. Now, can we say it was because of the iPads? No. There are a lot of factors uh, to, you know, to kind of make this a complicated uh, situation that you know, try to figure out. But I would say it didn't hurt. Uh, so Spiegelville did very well last year. Uh, what exactly does an alternative assignment mean for the, those who opt out? Uh, again, that's a difficult question because what it looks like in one class isn't necessarily here at Woodway. Second grade isn't necessarily going to look exactly the same in you know, Castleman Creek in second grade or Spiegelville in second grade. It really depends. Uh, I can give you an example for uh, the Spiegelville example I used earlier when I walked in and, and the students were doing some comparing and contrast and they were also learning about weather, so it was obviously a science activity and they were constructing some sort of a news, kind of a news letter type thing. Well, you know, an easy alternative assignment would be for a student to use paper and, you know, maybe cutting things out from magazines, you know, finding, you know, pictures, you know, to, to make her pick collage. That's just an example. But what we're going to do is in our teams, at least here at Woodway, we meet every Wednesday and we discuss issues just like this. Um, so it's going to be a challenge for our, our teachers and our teacher teams uh, to get together and really decide on alternate activities for specific lessons that are going to be of quality. Because we don't want to have a student doing something on an iPad that you know, has sound and there's images and it's just, you know, fantastic and then another student is doing a ditto sheet. That is not our intention. We care about kids, we care about all kids, and we're going to really work hard uh, 
to find alternative acti activities that are going to be meaningful for the student and really address the standards that we're trying to cover. Um, these two go together. It's, it's talking about basic skills, such as writing, penmanship, printing leg legibly, cursive. Um, also, what about math? You know, basic skills in math, like re re repetition skills, you know, learning their math facts, and also spelling, grammar. Um, it's not going to do, it's not going to take away from our standards, and part of our standards that we are responsible for teaching are you know, standards that have to do with penmanship. You know, our students are going to have paper and pencil activities still. This is not going to uh, change that part of our, of our education. So we're still going to work on basic skills. Um, we are still going to work on, you know, multiplication and computation skills. If anything, I think it's going to enhance our ability to do that. Um, you know, sometimes a student just doesn't want to use the paper and pencil flashcards. But maybe if it's you know, electronic. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen kids in front of electronics, but they get into it for some reason. Um, so it can enhance our ability to meet um, what, what we're needing them to learn and get those basic skills, but it's not going to take the place of paper and pencil activities completely. Okay? I, I just do not see that happening. It can't happen because our standards won't allow it. Anyway, um, how do you keep kids motivated to challenge themselves? Uh, this is kind of a, this is an overarching question, I think. Um, you know, motivation is one of those things that is, is difficult as a classroom teacher you, to keep 22 kids motivated in things that may not be that interesting. is kind of challenging. Uh, so the first thing is we've got to challenge our teachers to find ways to keep kids motivated. One of the things that we do here at Woodway is we really try to help students understand what effort has to do with achievement and how closely they're linked. And so we help kids understand that the more effort I put in, the better outcome I'm gonna receive. It's not only having to do with my innate ability or luck or maybe somebody else. It has to do with how much I put forth. And so we're really trying to teach the kids and that helps with the motivational side. Um, and then some other things that we're gonna do, again, I think iPads are gonna help in this situation. Uh, you know, I, you put, a, you put an, a story on an iPad rather than a piece of paper, and it just helps, it does. Uh, but again, it doesn't mean that we're only going to use iPads for everything now. We're gonna to try to be as appropriate as we can. For those who oppose iPads to the point of not letting their child get one, I would suggest that we have the PTA have a fund to pay for insurance for those children. Um, Again, very big question. These are some things that we're going to have to consider moving forward. My thought, and again, these are just my thoughts. We haven't, you know, we haven't talked as a team about any of this. But my thought is I don't want fear um, to keep a student from having access to an iPad. If it means that you know, a parent you know, is, is not able to afford the, you know, the possibility of that kid slamming their iPad on the ground and breaking it, you know, our school, Woodway at least, will come together and try to figure out a way, a solution, to get the student what he needs. But again, that's just my first thought reading the question. My goal is to have our students reach their fullest potential and not let fear or nervousness or anxiety keep us from doing that. So we'll figure it out situation by situation. Um, and the good news is, really, even if a student or a family can't afford to pay for a broken iPad, well, it's our job as the school to make sure that iPad doesn't get broken. Uh, and really, it's negligence or it's just willfully wanting to break it. I want to break this iPad. And you might have to pay for the iPad. That's really what we're talking about. So I hope everybody understands that we're not out to get families, we're not out to get kids, and we're going to make you pay for an iPad as soon as we can. You know, we really are about just learning. Uh, we're, you know, we all have, we're teachers at heart, like I said earlier, and it comes down to that. So don't let fear get in the way of getting your kid an iPad. We'll work it out together as a team, and, and we'll move forward. Okay. Um, Will parents be able to check student email accounts from home since the devices stay at school? So the answer is yes. And we'll make sure that you guys, if you, if you need access to your child's email, you can 
go through your uh, child's teacher or through the instructional team, and we'll make sure you have access to it. All means that's a student record. It's no different than you have access to a grade book. Okay, so um, there's nothing hidden there. Do pre-K parents have to sign the agreement for any link? So since those devices are used in group settings and they're not individual, the answer is no at this time. What are you doing to, to ensure that the iPads stay safe and are less likely to break? So we are putting OtterBox defenders on all the iPads. Um, it currently is the number one case protector on the market. Uh, I, I'm going to stop dropping mine. I haven't broken it yet, but I've been doing that demo repeatedly. And, um, I, I will tell you, they're very, very tough. Now, it's just like Mr. Pinky said, we're not anticipating problems. Um, we've, we've had a year and a half under our belt at Speakwell Elementary, we've had zero. So no child at that building would have had a parent that would have incurred a penalty. Um, how will the iPads be kept secure? So we have, we have security cameras, we have security resource officers that are in the district now from the city of Woodway and the city of Hewitt. Hewitt uh, the security resource officers are certified police officers within those jurisdictions. They also cover the district. One of the things that we have, we have security cameras all over in the in the hallways, etc. So, you know, we lock our buildings at night. Um, let's say we had a break-in and you lost, we lost a whole classroom set of iPads. You're not liable for that at all, no way, shape, or form. That falls back on the district. That would be under our district interest plan at that point. Um, so, the kinds of things that we're talking about, we're, we're doing a lot of due diligence. We have a special charging station that's a real nice charging station that we've actually designed. Um, and that will go in the classrooms to make sure that those devices are safe when they're stored uh, to be recharged, etc. And are we, are we training our teachers to creatively use the iPads? And I would say yes. Susan, we've had a year. Uh, the teachers have had iPads for a year now, and they've really done a lot of due diligence, homework, to try to make sure that they're going to instruct your child um, efficiently, correctly, 21st century learning skills. I mean, we've used a lot of the problems that other districts have had before us to try to make sure that we're not going to have those problems. Does that mean we won't have problems? Absolutely not. That everyone's a unique individual, and there's going to be some, you know, two steps forward, maybe a step back. But all in all, we, we've got a really good plan, we believe, based on some of the methods that we've used from other school districts. So um, it's been a well thought out process. So why does the district not assume the risk insurance for these devices? Well, the devices really are materials. So they're no different than a textbook, except that a textbook doesn't cost as much if you lose one, whereas an iPad costs that much if you lose an iPad. However, if you have any high schoolers who have lost a backpack full of, of books, they're actually more expensive than iPads. Now, we do not, again, anticipate any issues, especially in the elementary. We've had zero. It, it would be just like Mr. Pinky said, gross negligence is what we would be looking for. And that would be defined by the teacher in the classroom, calling the principal, the assistant principal, and ultimately maybe calling the uh, security resource officer if that was needed. Um, it just, we just haven't had any issues uh, at all to date. Why do parents have to ensure the iPad if they stay at the school? So it's just a safety measure that's offered. You certainly do not have to ensure the device. Again, no devices have been or would have been charged to a parent at all at Spiegelville. We don't anticipate that here. However, we wanted to make it available to parents if someone in the back of their mind thought, you know what? Um, I'm really worried that Johnny might break the device intentionally because of whatever reason Johnny has for the price of insurance maybe it makes me feel better to sign an agreement and not be hit up for the responsibility of you know a $479 device. Now do you need to take out insurance? That is strictly up to you. Um, I would also suggest to check with your insurance provider. We have heard from some parents that some homeowner policies are covering the devices that Again, um, we're just making it available in case it's something that you really want to use. Will e-textbooks save money? I think one of the parents here asked that. So, one, so that's a great question. I'll tell you, if you guys remember the uh, tornado that happened in Missouri a few years ago, 
um, it actually destroyed all of their materials, and they did not replace a single textbook. They did it with instructional resources that were available through iTunes U that were actually, they were, they were leveled within all of the functional elements of what they were teaching, from science to math, from K to 12. So textbook publishers know, and they're actually required under federal law to have an electronic equivalent today. Textbook publishers compete against each other, so we don't anticipate that those ebook materials are going to cost significantly more or less than regular textbook materials. So we do an adoption every four years of a particular subset. The state of Texas provides what we call the instructional materials allotment. It's money set aside for school districts across the nation to purchase, or across the state of Texas, pardon me, to purchase textbooks. Now, we will be utilizing those funds to do, guess what, electronic equivalents as they become available. So it behooves the textbook publishers to make sure that pricing is appropriate to fall within the guidelines to be able to get the instructional materials from a school district. The other thing that changed with the last legislative session was they allowed schools to, to purchase electronic materials with those IMA funds. So the state of Texas, your legislators know that things are changing. And they know that school districts are going to have to make sure that functionally they have this much money within the instructional materials allotment. The textbook publishers know this too. They can't charge an exorbitant fee or otherwise other school districts aren't going to use them and their textbook's going to go away. So I can, I can assure you that some of those things are going to coincide together with how those materials allotments are going to be procured. What is the policy on internet security and access? How do kids email? So on the iPad, there's an app that is Microsoft Exchange. We are a Microsoft Exchange shop. And when we enroll the student, they'll have access right there on their iPad to email from within an app or within email, etc. The policy on the internet, we have varying internet policies and varying internet filtering depending on whether your child is in elementary, intermediate level, middle school, high school, because those children at those different levels need different resources. So we're aware of that. We have multiple layers, multiple policies, and those policies are driven by instructional needs. So it's not something that we say willy nilly what someone needs. We subscribe to a service. We have a product called iBoss. It's from Phantom Technologies. They actually download content all the time. There's, a, there's K-12 schools all across the nation that use that product. Um, and it's within, it's one of the top five resources available for internet filters in, in the U.S. today. Um, if you look at what we do on email, we have multiple layers on email. So we have, we have multiple filters on our email server. We have an inbound, uh, outbound that filters email there as well. So we make sure that email your child's not going to get spam. Okay. Um, could I further explain the liability or the insurance policy or the iPad? I think I've covered that. If you have questions, please, again, there's going to be a lot of us here to answer those questions at the end. Uh, what researches are being considered about how much, too much media, screen time, exposure? Um, and I'll defer to Susan. I don't know if you've got, I mean, so, so we look at research and Susan looks at some research. There's, I, you know, if you find a researcher who says it should be this much time, you can find another one who says it's this much time. So we're doing what, in the instructional folks' opinion, is the best based on all of the things that we've looked at and what other school districts have done before us. Um, how will the teacher-child interaction be regulated? So that happens in the classroom. The teachers have had a lot of uh, instruction from the instructional teams to say, here's, what's, here's what you should be doing, here's what's good, here's, not, here's what maybe is not so good. And they, they looked at a lot of the resources coming out of Spiegelville. So Spiegelville parents have done it, or Spiegelville teachers have done an outstanding job. And I will tell you, myself, there were some teachers at Spiegelville, I just, they were, I didn't think they would be able to do it because I thought, Quite frankly, they're not young enough to adopt some of this stuff. And I, and I, I have to say, I was wrong, flat wrong. Um, you know, the reality is, many of those teachers have done better than some of the young ones. And 
it, it really has been amazing. I think uh, some of the stuff that those folks have done in the Quest, what they've done instructionally, is it's really outstanding. Uh, if I don't agree to an iPad use, my child will feel left out. How do you plan on handling that? So, so we are, we have those alternative resources. We're not taking down the labs. So there will still be the potential for your child to go to labs to be able to do lab work as well. So just because it's a web quest doesn't necessarily mean if you actually, you know, you say, I'm steadfast and I'm not going to get my, I don't want my child to have this device. I, and I hope we can change your mind. But if you do that, there will still be resources for them to use here at the school. Okay, so we're not, we're not dismantling all the things that we put in production beforehand. All of those things functionally are still going to be here. But the expectation is just going to change. Okay. Is the camera going to be activated? That is a great question. So not initially, no, because it's a, it's a learning tool. Um, can the camera be, be activated? Yes. With the mobile device manager, we can actually turn off the camera during the testing window. So that's a pretty cool feature function because the state is really particular about what you do and what you don't do within, within the testing within the schools. So we can turn off a camera, and, and if there was a particular incident, I don't want to get into that, but if there was some positive reason you said, you know, I have an, an education plan that I need my child's camera turned off, that is something we could do. Um, if, if it's lost, is there a way you can track the iPad? So yes, um, we can track the iPad. There's a, there's a locate my device that is enabled through the mobile device manager. So if the device, so let's say that Johnny, put his iPad up and then the teacher turned around and Johnny's iPad is gone. Yes, we can track that device. Um, we have already successfully located probably less than about a half a dozen devices at intermediate level and some at middle school that were on iPad parts that the teacher turned their back and they disappeared. And we've not had, we've had zero theft. So. Um, and can siblings share the iPads? Under this model, no, they cannot because they're actually going to be here housed at the school. Uh, if you have another question, if you you want to, if you have a card, raise it up. If you don't, we can we'll go into, I'm fixing the, it's actually 7 o'clock. Um, let me ask this last question for Susan. Sorry, I'm you. Oh, the cost of the insurance, so there's, there's several companies that's posted on the website under parents. Um, there's a company called GoCare. So, so GoCare has given Midway parents a special price. It's $39 for one year. And that's one full year with a $100 deductible. So what that covers is destruction, um, broken devices, screens, etc. There was a question also, I don't think I covered, that asked who's going to do the repair. We do our own repairs in most cases. Um, if a parent came to me and we had a device broken and you think you've got a better deal, let me know and if it lives up to the level of repair that we do, certainly we'll do that. So we don't charge parents for our time. Our time is a sunk cost in the school district. So I have an opportunity cost of sending my guys out or doing an iPad repair. And we're going to get the iPad repaired as soon as possible. Now, that doesn't mean in every case we can repair it ourselves. Um, we have contracted already with a, a, a company here in town who's putting the covers on for us. And they have assured us on an iPad Air they can replace the screen for around $125. So in that case, if you spent it for your child was if your child was maliciously destructive, it might not be worth spending $39 and a $100 deductible. Uh, because at that, at, at that point you're at 125 if they broke the screen, it might be cheaper. Uh, again, we don't anticipate those. We want to make sure parents understand that it's about the device being the material and, and it's about the responsibility has to be placed back on. It'd be no different if your child came in and maliciously destroyed a computer monitor in the lab. Guess what? You haven't signed an agreement that you're still responsible for that. Um, I'm gonna. It's actually 7:03, and in respect to your time, we're gonna close the session. I appreciate your attendance. It's been awesome, Mr. Pinion. Thank you so much for letting us use this facility. If you have questions we have not answered specifically, we have folks around. Dr. Merritt is now in the room. He's also under the curriculum department.
So we'll lay back. By all means, please come to us and ask us individually. And you guys have a great night. There's laptops in the back if you want to sign up. Thank you.